Welcome to my channel, The My Reader Minutes. Today we're going to get into Married to Medicine. This is episode two. Now, I didn't take a lot of notes with this one because I'm intrigued with the show in general. And um, so I'm just going to go based on memory and chat about it. And if, sorry, you guys. And if <clears throat> you want to leave a comment, we can chat some more. So I like the way that it comes on. And again, let me reiterate that this is my first season watching this. So I like the way it comes on and it gives you the little clips of each of the ladies and what they're doing. I think um, with Dr. Heavenly, she was in a yoga class and a wig fell off in the beginning. It was like, he gave you like 15 seconds and then they move on to the next one. It's like they give the little blurbs. But anyway, this episode starts out with Quad showing up at Phaedra, Phaedra's house. And as soon as Phaedra opens, the, up, opens up the door, I love that energy that they give each other. They feed off each other. And it's like, yeah, you know, that type of thing. It's like party, like it's so much fun. And just like Quad, you know, <clears throat> described. It looks like it's a it's a good time when you when those two get together. Anywho, she she invites her in, and uh, <laughs> another thing that caught me off guard: Phaedra has a butler. Now I want to say that that's really just for the show, because it he just it felt out of place. Really, Phaedra? <laughs> really? And not that. I mean, of a blur. Oh, well, she's never had a butler before. But maybe she has, and she, she didn't have one on um, Real Housewives of Atlanta. But anyway, and then the fact that they were watching him walk away. Now, is it, if he's on the job, and I know men do it to women all the time, but if that had happened to a woman, then we'd be up in arms, right? But he walks away. Phaedra didn't say anything, but Quad did. But Quad was like, okay, as if they were, I don't know. Like I said, men do it to women all the time, but that don't make it right. Anyway, she has a butler. So they sit down, they start talking. And she asks her, no, she says, Phaedra says, I saw you over in Africa. What well, for you have an, you know, you dating or you booed up or whatever. I don't know how she said it. And they show the clip of her over in Africa with this nice looking guy. And then as soon as they cut back, she's in confessional. She's like, pipe down. His name is Gentleman. And that's all she was giving. She didn't give us no tea. Because her thing is, this is me. Um, This is new. And... You don't need anything else. We don't even know where it's going. And I get that. Plus, if you think about it, her track record. Well, her relationships on the show. <laughs> she reality show one, quad zero. Um, so they move on to the ladies of the group. And uh she asks, well, Phaedra asks, has she spoken to any of them and her thing was well no they haven't uh reached out to me and um and then she goes into well they've been talking about you and i think she brings the fact that toya mentioned something about her having a dui and she said she said that phaedra was like yeah and she said well i was cited i think she said she I think she said she um, must have refused a breathalyzer, but she called a lawyer and they filed the paperwork and it's over with. And Paige said, it's okay. So it's done. She was like, yeah. And her thing is like, why? If you're going to talk about me, why talk about stuff like that? Like ne ne negativity. And then she goes on, she moves on to Dr. Heavenly. Now I like Dr. Heavenly. Now she's shady as hell. But I like her. <laughs> I like her. And um, she shows where Dr. Heavenly texts to her a picture. She's out with sweet tea. But you can tell how she stay her stance in the picture that she's being shady. 
And she's going to text me this. And, and you know, Quad, Quad says, she's going to text me this picture talking about out with my new friend or something like that. But the way they weren't standing side by side like they were chilling like buddies. But Sweet Tea was in front. And Dr. Heavenly's kind of like in the back, the way she positioned, the way she was looking, like she was looking at Quad, like, look at this here. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell she was being shady. Anyway, Qua was like, why would you send me something like that? You know? Phaedra's like, yeah, wow, that's crazy. But she also reiterates that the phone works both ways, Quad. Just like they could have called you, you could have called them. But her thing was, you know, stuff ain't feeling right with the ladies at this point. So... Um, I think that's pretty much the end of that scene. And I think they move on to Sweet T's house. And she's cooking dinner for her man. Because that's what millennials do, right? They in the kitchen cooking dinner. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But anyway, she is. Because that's what she, you know, she's... I guess she feels like that's what she has to do because that's what he wants. She said, she said, that's what he wants. He likes his dinner cooked when he comes home. Most men say that's what they want, right? I mean, my ex used to want his dinner, not when he came home, but he wanted a home cooked meal almost every night and his sides. <sighs> yeah. Anywho, I digress. Anyway, um, so she's cooking dinner. And his thing is, you know, he likes her cooking. That's great. And um, he likes the way she cooks greens. But, you know, they sit down at the table and she's like, how's your day? And then, you know, I guess they go into the wedding planning um, subject. And her thing is, you need to be more helpful. Because I guess she was, she's feeling overwhelmed. And his thing was, well, I'm paying for the, the whole thing. I mean, that's about as much involvement as he really wants to be in. And her thing is, you just need to be around. Because this is, I guess, it's getting to be overwhelming for her. And um, he made a comment saying, well, I'm paying at least 90% of it. She said, well, I put my money towards it. And, you know, she, and I'm thinking, if he's paying 90, you're paying 10. What, what part are you paying? What'd you pay for? His rent? I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what that 10% could be because weddings are a full-blown wedding. And I'm sure hers is going to be na nice and na nice and fancy. You can't say nice and nasty, but <laughs> nice and fancy. And, uh, yeah, what is she putting towards it? 10%? Okay. Anyway, his thing was no. He don't want to be involved. He's paying for it. And, you know, I guess you need to find help somewhere else. So it looks like they were going back and forth for a minute there. And I don't know if production cut it out or they just, you know, came to the clue at the end of the day. He ain't helping with nothing but the cake tasting. So bring on the cake. <laughs> right. You wanted them, didn't you? Don't, you know, don't be complaining about a man you getting ready to marry. He said, will you marry me? You said, I do. Don't complain or don't marry him. That's what I say. Anyway, so the next segment, they go with, uh, they go, they turn to Dr. Jackie. And Dr. Jackie, Jackie's talking to the doctor that she hired to, you know, help lighten her workload or, or her lo workload for the, for her practice. And she says, since she's uh, brought on, I forgot the doctor's name. So she's brought on board, you know, she's able to see her last patient at two and she has a weekend to herself and she's loving life. And then they show a clip of her getting home and her husband like, oh my gosh, like you home, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, it was really cute. But um, while she's sitting there talking to the doctor, she lets her know that, you know, she spoke with Brad because of Evidently, Brad is one of her patients, the rapper. And um, she told Brad that if she happened to be out of town, that, you know, she's referred her to 
this doctor to deliver her baby. So they talk and they go, I think they do a clip of when um, Dr. Jackie interviewed her and then they go into um, the the room with Brat and Judy and they're looking at the baby. She's having a sonogram and you see the baby's head and you know, all his features or whatever. And um, Brad's laying there, poor baby. She looks so miserable. And um, I want to say Dr. Jackie was like, what did you eat today? And she was quiet. And then Judy just spoke up, I think, and said, well, we had Wendy's on the way in. And she was like, damn, all you do is tell on me. We go to the doctors, all you do is snitch. Or she said something like that. And she said, well, what did you have, Brad? And she said, I just had a single with cheese. And she just shook her head. And she said, well, I had a lot of extra, you know, vegetables on it, you know, lettuce, tomato, or whatever. <laughs> she said, I didn't get a double or, or a triple. She said, you're going to put yourself in a hospital. She was like, I need, give me, fill this cup up. So she goes in the bathroom and tries, I guess, she goes, how much you need? They're yelling back and forth. Their banter was cute. And she was like, all of it. She was like, I ain't got enough for all that. <laughs> but that was cute. So, I don't know. The brat looked really big. I know she's had to be down as I've seen her. But she was really, really, really. I guess she was big on time anyway, right? I mean, she was not a thin girl. She was really big carrying that baby. Anyway, he's the cutest. So the next segment, um, they go to Toya's house. Toya's on the phone. I think I want to say she's talking to Simone, maybe. And she's talking to Simone about her wine business. And um, I think she's going to plan a wine tasting uh, segment for the girls. And um, while she's talking to her, her husband comes in and um, kind of interrupts the phone call. And she gets off the phone. So her thing was, I'm glad you're here because we need to talk to the boys. Boys about, you know, the birds and the bees because they're horny. And he looks at her like, what? <laughs> and she goes into telling him that, yeah, well, I guess when they were in the car, one of her sons brought up the fact that he was watching Playboy. He was like, no, I wasn't. It was a documentary. Like, who happened to her? He was, she was like, well, whatever. They came back and they told it, but we need to have the conversation with them. So they call the boys downstairs. And that was a cute segment. Um, but it was really funny <laughs> talking about, you know, well, when you have sex, um, when you have sex, that um, all the venereal diseases or the Transmitted sexual diseases, not venereal diseases. Well, yeah, it's the same thing that you can get. And they were like, you know, and then she hollered. She she said something about crabs and she was naming all this stuff. And then I think his, his father mentioned something about gonorrhea or chlamydia. One of, of them, and it's and that's a burning sensation. And the boys are just like sitting there confused as hell. She said, bottom line, wait till you get married. That's what I say. Wait till you get married. Stop being grown. Stop being grown. But these kids today, they have access to too much. And they know too much too soon. So I guess it's good to have that talk. Wrap it up if you feel like you can't wait. Wrap it up tight. <laughs> Don't be just messing with some little fast thing because she look cute. No. Just like you thought she looked cute, somebody else thought she looked cute. No. <laughs> so the next segment, it's gonna be real fast today. The next segment, um, oh, they meet sweet tea. She's going to try on bridal dresses. Now, this was really uh a good clip of the show. And they show, you know, she's getting, I guess, Sweet Tea comes in there with one of her group, um, her friends from the group that she, excuse me, joined on Facebook. But I'll get to that 
later. But they all come in, and Toya comes in. She's got a really cute outfit on. She looks really nice. And Phaedra comes in dressed to the nines. I mean, the shoes that she had on could walk down the street by themselves. I'm telling you, that woman, she, I don't know, she didn't always be, she wasn't always a fashionista, fashionista. But, you know, she could always give you, like, put together, you know what I mean, at one point when she's on Real House of Atlanta. But she's really, 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 really was, she walked in there and her girls were like, woo, woo, woo. And they sit down and at the time, um, I think they were talking to one of the, talking to the girl that walked in with Sweet Tea. And they were like, well, how do you know Sweet Tea? How'd you meet? She said, we met online, you know, with a group for age gap relationships. And, you know, I like when the music goes, <laughs> like, what? <laughs> and her thing is like, okay. Um, yeah. So you have to have, a, she said, what do y'all talk about? <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, yeah, what do they talk about? How old is your man? Oh, yeah, my man is 70. How old is your man? Well, my man is 65. Well, yeah, well, what is your man? Did, does he do that? You know, how do you, what, what do you talk about? How does that conversation go? Are you getting pointers, tips? Like what? I don't know. Anywho, she has, she's in a group. She said her girlfriends, her age don't understand. So she had to go with a group of girls, a group of women that are in the same boat as her. So there it is. So um, she comes out and, and they say, oh, yeah, I like that dress. Look at you. Boo, boo, boo. And then she comes up with, I guess, was, I don't know, it was like a little, it was cream or beige. Or I don't know, it had a little something on it. And um, she was like, I like this dress. It matches my ring. And Toy says, what, your ring ain't clear? And she was like, my rose gold, <laughs> my rose gold, oh my God. So, yeah, the ladies were being a bit catty and shady. So Phaedra proceeds and says, girl, you butt challenged. I was like, you need my booty alone. She was being in real good spirits while they were there. But she lets them have it at the wine tasting. So they do all their digs and everything. And um, that wraps up that segment. So then they get to the wine tasting. Toy is there first. She's making sure that everything is set up. And then the girls start to walk in. Or the ladies, actually. And so... She, um, Sweet Tea addresses them and says about, says, you know, well, first, <laughs> Dr. Heavenly, <laughs> my girl, she gonna say, so I heard you, you know, had to seek therapy for your old man or to date an old man or dating a and she was like, no, it's a Facebook group for age gap relationships. And then she was like, what are you talking about? Like, what is, you know? And she was asking all these questions and, and I guess Sweet Tea was getting fed up with her. And she said, well, do you want to join? And Dr. Heaven said, well, um, well, well, my man's only six months older than me, but, you know, yeah, I guess that'll work. Do I, do I even qualify? <laughs> Oh my God. Dr. Heaven, leave alone. She just always finds a way to be shady to people, but I love it. It's just, I think it's her voice and the way she does it. Like nobody else could pull that off. Like I have a sister who comes across real witty. Anybody else that says what she says to you, will hurt your feelings. But when she says it to you, you laugh because you think it's because it's her delivery. It's all in the delivery, right? And Dr. Heavenly has that. So anyway, long story short, so Sweet Tea's not feeling it. And she's like, I'm irritable. 
I, I, you know, I'm not taking this. So Simone checked, you know, senses that something's not right. She said, you okay? She was like, no. So she said, come on. So they go off in the bathroom and she's pouring her heart out about Dr. G, which makes me feel like they've heard these stories before because Simone is like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if they backtrack or they roll the cameras back, Claude is saying the same thing. Maybe in a different scenario because they were married, but Claude is saying the same thing about it. He ain't changed. You're just the new kid on the block. And now you got to go through what Quad went through. I understand women don't think that. Well, I guess women think that it's always going to be different with them. If the man don't change, what's different? Just the players. You being the new player for this game. And men do, I'm not going to say all men, most men do not change. They may change their tactic, same person. And I feel like, Sweet T, even though I think she's walked down the aisle with him, she's married to him because she told Dr. Heavenly, um, I want to say in the episode coming up that they'll figure it out once they get married. Okay, somebody need to tell her, mm, what you see is what you get, boo. It ain't going to change. It ain't going to change. Well, that was all for this episode. You know, um... Once I get to know their personalities a little better, I think I'll be, you know, a little better commentating. But for the most part, this episode, I give it a, mm, I give it a six or a six and a half, only because I felt like it was somewhat of a filler. Next week, because they showed a sneak uh, preview of, um, I guess they're doing her a bachelorette party. I don't know what they're doing. Anyway, Quad shows up. Phaedra brings her. So, again, a recipe for messiness. <laughs> Anywho. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And leave your thoughts in your comments. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day. Okay, never turn this.